On Paris's left bank lies the Institute of France. It's home to the country's five most important académies, among them the French Academy and the Academy of Fine Arts, which is currently celebrating its 200th birthday. But that's not what these women have come for. They're here to celebrate the 70th birthday of the Pierre Cardin fashion house, in the very same room where French chemist Louis Pasteur once presented his discoveries. The first time I heard about him was from my grandma. He's certainly not the newest kid on the block. In my grandma's time, he was the label to be seen in. And it's cool that 50 years later, we're still talking about him, that our generation knows Pierre Cardin. 94-year-old Pierre Cardin is the son of Venetian immigrants. From 1946, he worked with the likes of Schiaparelli, Paquin and Dior. For me, he, he, he's inno innovation. It's the future, it's the uh, courage to be yourself and have style. Because when everything is simple, you can have something different, also but okay, casual, but with attitude. I like this attitude. In 1953, Cardin presented his first haute couture collection. And in 1959, he was thrown out of the couture trade association for launching a ready-to-wear line. He really is a self-made man, and I admire him for that. Everyone has their own vision. I think he's really a genius. He started off pretty much as a seamstress, or near enough. Nobody helped him. He's been the driving force behind everything he's achieved, and he opened himself up to the international market. He has truly remarkable initiative. Gardin revolutionized the business of fashion, initiating some 800 license agreements throughout the world and heralding the start of an era of mass market consumerism. Those unable to afford Cardin's clothes were soon able to buy things like Cardin matches, thereby entering in some small way Cardin's fashion universe. People at the academy didn't really know my work. When they let me in 25 years ago, I was the youngest and now I'm the oldest. So they saw my work, they may have liked it or they may not have liked it, that's up to them. But I wanted to prove to them that if they accepted me, it would be for my work and not just for my name. In 79, Cardin was the first French designer to show his collection in China. To have personality, you need to have a style. And I created that style, it's Cardin, whether you like it or not. It's about having a certain direction, one that's instantly recognizable. In 1965, when Cardin hired her as a model, Marise Gaspard was 18 years old. She's been working with him for 50 years and is now his director of couture. Don't you think that these pieces could easily be worn today? It's so modern, even today. It's extravagant and it's really, well, you feel comfortable. You could wear it to take the metro. It's practical. These are clothes that are comfortable, practical and timeless. Whether they're from the 60s, 70s or the 2010s, Cardin's silhouettes are unmistakably Cardin. This red coat is from 1952. I think there's a certain restraint to women from that era. But more than anything, there's an elegance, a lightness. It really inspires me, absolutely. When it came out, this coat caused an uproar. Back then, the idea of wearing pleated outerwear was unheard of. Oh yes, it was a scandal. I had to get the press made specially. At the time, no one had ever tried to pleat Montagnac fabric. So I said, if you can't do it, make a machine that can. So yes, we made the machine and we made the coat. The mission statement of the Academy of Fine Arts is to defend and promote France's artistic heritage. Pierre Cardin's place within the Academy is therefore evidence that fashion really is an art. It is an art in its own right, and I want its presence in this institution, one that is reserved for artists, to be proof of that. Designers aren't artisans, they're not performers, they're composers, creators, and they are artists who form part of the Academy of Fine Arts. And the fact that Pierre Cardin was elected 25 years ago shows that his peers, his fellow artists, considered fashion to be an art form in its own right, just like other more traditional art forms. 
definitive proof then that fashion is an art form, and Cardin likes to muse on just what that means. It's useful, but it's not necessary. Those are two different things. Firstly, imagine a world without boutiques, without fashion. There would be no cities. Imagine a desert with a naked man in the centre. Is he German, Italian, French, Chinese? Apart from the colour and shape of his eyes, we don't know who he is, what period he's from. Thanks to painting, we know that he's from the 16th, 17th, 18th century, or from Roman, Greek or Egyptian times. Fashion holds great psychological and social importance. It's useful, but not always necessary. If you want to be naked, you can be. Clothes are hardly an obligation. Pierre Cardin, the man who experimented with sculptural volumes, the man who dressed the Beatles and brought the Mao suit to Europe, remains a towering figure in the history of fashion.